Hello and welcome to this presentation on an accountancy career. My name is Sarah Gifford and I am the careers lead within Catplan and I'm really pleased today to be joined um, by the wonderful Anthony. Anthony, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, thanks very much, Sarah. Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony and I am a recruitment coordinator for Kaplan. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about um, a career in accountancy um, and what we're going to be covering today. Um, we're going to be covering what an, a career in accountancy look like, the skills and behaviours that you will need, accountancy career pathways, industries and accountancy, professional bodies, how can I get a career in accountancy, qualifications and study options? And last but not least, accountancy in a digital age and how will a career in accountancy be different in 2021? So let's start. So what does a career in accountancy look like? So amongst other things, a career in accountancy can be predominantly registered with these following traits and skills and behaviours each day, such as accounts prep, bookkeeping, budgeting, assist in the preparation of statutory financial statements, assist with auditing and financial investigations, compliance returns such as VAT returns, and last but not least, assisting in the prep of management accounts. So how will what, what will your job look like in your first ever role as an accountancy, um, shall we say, employee? So according to Lowe, 2020 from accounting.com, an accounting career, shall we say, is more predominantly related to being a part of a large network in other professions. Um, this means that you'll have numerous opportunities to network, both in a social setting and a professional setting, great for progression and succession opportunities. And it also enables you to work and develop with other professionals in the field, which I think is fantastic. Have opportunities to work in any industry that you choose. Um, you also become a lifelong learner. You continue to be challenged. Ha have a profession that is respected and known for its integrity and ethics. And be much more than a typical being counter. Um, accounting is much more than your typical day to day job. Um, you'll be involved in multiple different aspects of business areas, including problem solving, um, and you'll be able to do that as you go along through the processes. The work you do will be used in key decision making and used in, in accounting knowledge to provide accurate information and data for your company to use. So it's a super, basically with accountancy, it's a really super um, job that you can sort of get involved with and have your voice be heard and also become a viable asset to, uh, to a big business and a corporation, really. So what are the skills and behaviours that you need in order to become a successful accountant? So we've broken these down into three separate areas. So we have the first one, which is technical. Technical skills can be uh, related to good use of IT, including Microsoft Office packages, proficient using email, confident when producing documents, and a strong set of technical responsibility. Organisational skills, such as communication skills, both written and verbal, or self-organised or self-organisation. And able the ability to manage one's workload effectively, and strong time management and then finally personal qualities it's a good can-do attitude someone who is really really tenacious a willingness to progress and develop someone who is hard working um, but also someone who is not afraid to ask for help and also remains self-motivated that's really good anthony and what about um if you just touch on this um this idea of technical um for some people who might be new to uh you know getting their first job um this can be a little bit daunting so you know is this something that they um, would have would have already picked up or is it something they're going to learn on, on the on the program yeah good question Sarah I mean I would say with their skills and aptitudes of what needs to be an accountant and um, you will notice that a large amount of them have been broken up into, into three separate areas and um, the reason being why I have done this is just because it's easier for you to sort of relate to the areas of skills where you may think you do not already have any and um, so if we have a little look at the technical skills aspect you know, everyone's had uh, the opportunity of working with emails. And uh, I'm sure we've all got a large um, ability to use smartphones um, and be able to send emails out, check, and therefore you've got going to have some form of experience with working with email. And um, it's the same with during your time at GCSE uh, at high school. Um, you would have already been using computer software such as Microsoft, but you probably would have been predominantly uh, using the likes of, um, shall we say, Word or PowerPoint to an extent, and you might have touched on Excel depending on what subject you take. Um, but the good news is, is a large amount of these skills are transferable and you can also develop on them during a career in accountancy because you are going to be um, involved with a large 
amount of uh, software technology and therefore you can upgrade your skills as you go along through your progression through a career it's the same with organizational skills and personal qualities if you can feel that you can hold a conversation but also be an active listener you've demonstrated good listening skills if you have got really good attendance in school you have really good organizational skills and time management so each certain skill what an accountant would need is can be found in just your day-to-day -day -to -day life as a student in a GCSE standards in school which I believe that everyone should already have. Brilliant, thank you Anthony. No problem. So let's talk a little bit about the accountancy and the career pathways. So when thinking about the types of job opportunities in accounting, it is important to remember the types of jobs in each area is known for. So the types of accounting are more commonly known as audit accounting, which is responsible for scrutinising the accounts, processes and procedures of a business. They spend their working hours poring over financial statements, inspecting accounts and making sure the business is following the correct accounting and legal procedures. The next one we have is financial accounting, um, which is responsible for recording, summarising and reporting a company's financial transactions. Next, we have management accounting. Um, this is responsible for the work in the finance department of a single company. Roles are often varied, however, but, see, but they are senior to the ones that are below. And last but not least, we also have forensic accounting. So forensic accounting is to provide investigative support to clients such as businesses, lawyers, barristers and regulatory bodies. The work is varied, yet important when it comes to investigating financial problems. So just very briefly, these are just sort of the areas where accountancy and the types of accountancy careers that you can go down during your progression through your accountancy qualifications. And um, so some questions that come to mind is, so what jobs would I look for as an aspiring accountant? And did you know that every business in every sector actually does need an accountant? And accountancy is the language of business. And if all accounts were to disappear off the face of the earth, businesses would fall within the next 24 hours as they are responsible for their, um, a large proportion of the business's success and health. So that is the main coverage for in terms of career accountancy career pathways. Our next slides are super informative and really colourful. Um, as you can see, you'll see some things pop out. And these are just a collection of images and industries that we at Kaplan have worked in and worked with in terms of with our um, clientele point of view, but also the industries where you are able to develop as an accountant. So let's go from just in no, no particular order. Going from the top left, we have a young chap with a set of headphones on. Um, this, uh, we have also worked with accountancy um, and uh, gaming companies. Um, so, you know, it's again, you can also be work playing games whilst also being an accountant, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, you have a really good spread of food and drinks. We've worked with multiple different um, companies in the food and beverage sector. Um, uh, the next one would be shopping. So retail businesses, um, both big and small. Um, and like I said, everyone needs an accountant. The same goes for media, um, which is internet, television, radio, magazines, newspapers, um, utilities, um, banks and building societies, the public sector, such as schools, um, the fire and police services and, and hospital services as well. Um, my favourite one, which is in the middle, which is music. Um, accountants are needed in the music industry also, um, whether that would be from a performance perspective and dealing with individual accounts or whether it would be dealing for a bigger company involved in the music industry. You also have accountancy and consultant services, construction, hospitality and automotive as well, which is the likes of um, motorised companies, vehicle companies, people who deal with really good cars, um, trading companies. Everyone needs an accountant. And this is just sort of giving you a taste of where the types of industries you can particularly end up in. Um, and as you can see, because it's so vast and varied, you can, you can go anywhere with accountancy daily. It's nice. brilliant. So diverse. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it's super diverse. And it just makes everybody think a little bit about where we can actually go with it. So which is super good. Um, so moving on, then we have salary expectations. So from a perspective of salary expectations, then um, salaries may differ on multiple of factors, um, including location and the types of employers that you go for. So but with the likes of salaries of what can be expected, um, if we go from on this table, what, I've, what is on the screen for your um, for you to look at. We have level two, which is the AAT foundation, for example, and um, the expected salary is anywhere between 10 to 14,000 pounds. Level three is between 11 to 16,000 pounds. Level four, uh, which would be also classed as the AAT professional level, which we'll touch on um, later, um, which is the, which can be expected to have around about 12 to 17,000 pounds as a salary. 
Um, level seven qualifications, um, you can expect it to achieve um, a salary of anywhere between 14 to 18,000 pounds. And in terms of a graduate perspective, um, salaries do also range from 16 to 20,000 pounds. As you can see, on, on the table here, salaries are very, um, very different from the starting point to the end point, but throughout the levels and throughout your progression, um, salaries, your natural salary increases because you are developing in the qualifications and you are becoming a professional in this sector uh, with each qualification that you achieve. So it clearly shows a progression route and you the ability to develop further into a, into a long-term and prosperous career. Um, but some things that may impact salaries may be things such as location, like I said, and the types of employers, which are two of the main ones. Um, if you have previous experience, that would also be taken into consideration from a salary perspective. Um, if you have any, um, pre-existing accountancy qualifications that can also be taken into perspective and also the type of aptitude you display too um, but it also depends on hugely on location and um, as you're aware you know location is dependent in each different part of the countries but the good news is is in terms of the salary is that there is a norm there is now normally a clear progression route in terms of your salary expectations as you increase throughout the levels. That's brilliant. So these are really starting um, salary expectations. And, you know, as you said, as you progress through the, um, the qualifications, you'll become more qualified and therefore more employable and your salary will reflect that. Yes, definitely. So moving on, um, what is a professional body? So if you are interested in a career in accounting, you would have heard um, this saying um, slayed around quite a lot. Uh, so we have a professional body and what, that, what this means is it's professional institutions are the societies and associations that promote and further a career uh, and the people who practice it. In the UK alone, there are over 80 charter professional institutions covering areas of work, including finance, engineering, construction, health, law, journalism, personnel and management and that's it for them to talk of jobs in 2021. Brilliant and professional bodies um, they, they're not only there to um, you know as it says here to, to kind of support the people who are practicing in that mm -hmm. area but they're also the institutions that set the standards don't they so they they're there as a quality mark um, against uh, you know the, the kind of qualifications that you can gain. Yes, exactly that. Um, the professional bodies are there to, um, shall we say, keep the level of um, expertise needed to achieve the qualification um, quite high. But not only that, but with being a professional, with being involved with the professional body, it's a qualification for life. Yeah. And the good news is, is that um, throughout the throughout the world, professional bodies are widely recognised. So therefore, it, it is a transferable qualification also. Brilliant. Excellent. So. Big question, which is how do I get also start a career in accountancy? So we're just going to touch on a couple of things and you would have heard me talk, reference this throughout our uh, presentation today. So starting off with the qualifications and progression. So what accountancy qualifications and bodies do we work with at Kaplan? And um, so the professional bodies, which are most commonly um, going to be familiar with a large amount of our audience who are looking to pursue a career in accountancy would be the accountancy and tax appropriate um, proportions of the qualifications what we offer at Kaplan. So let's touch on accountancy first. You would have heard me talk about AAT, which stands for the Association of Accountant Te Te Technicians. Um, AAT uh, offers for a, a large variety of levels from a foundation perspective all the way up to a higher and professional perspective. Um, and normally throughout AAT, you will become to find an area of work in which you are excited to learn more about or interested in to pursue as a long-term career. And then from that, you will then pursue it down the line into a charter perspective which are the um the ch which are the charter qualifications uh, so starting off on the list after aat we have aca also known as icaw and um, aca stands for the institute of chartered accountants in england and wales um which aca is more of a practice profession so it is something where you like to do audit going and do internal accounts for a business um SEMA, on the other hand, which is the, which stands for the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, is more industry based. So it's more client based. It's more people focused. Um, and then last on the list, we also have ACCA, which is the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. ACCA is the qualification where um, if you feel that you would like the option of doing both. So you might have um, a portion of your of your professionalism towards accountancy in terms of an industry perspective. So you like working with people, you like dealing with the client side of things, but the other side that you like working for an internal company, working in a practice plan, um, likes the idea of doing internal audit and the year and focusing on more of the numerical side in terms from a heavy 
viewpoint, um, you have the option of studying both, which is ACCA. It gives you the option of diversifying in both areas and giving you um, the pick of the litter, really. So yeah, it's excellent. Um, on the opposite side, we also have tax. And um, tax is also described as ATT, which is the Association of Taxation Technicians, and CTA, which is the Chartered Institute of Taxation. Again, a clear progression level between them both. Tax, in particular, is a very specialist area, um, not to be confused with something which is deemed less important than accountancy qualifications. Everyone needs someone who is diverse in tax. But the good news is, is it gives you the option of diversifying in that qualification down the line throughout your AAT qualification also. Um, is if you prefer to go down that route in terms of a long-term career of doing tax, which can be quite common also. So which qualification is the right one for you? I would say in my professional opinion um, to go for AAT to begin with um, and plan your professionalism as you go along. But in terms of the types of study options we have, um, study options at CAP plan is in terms of the qualification in which you wish to study. Um, uh, so now that you have an idea of the qualifications in which in accounting has to offer, there are different methods of study that will allow you to do this. So with fee paying, some facts about fee paying can be commonly known as the ability to complete the qualification at a quicker rate. There is no necessary structure and um, you have the option of completing an independent study and um, costs must be covered by yourself or your employer and there is no work experience gained. Um, with a study or with fee paying in particular, um, with what I would, the main point I would make with it in terms of fee paying would be in terms of obviously paying off your qualification and um, the cost, the cost of the qualification will be absorbed predominantly either via yourself or via your employer. Um, so that's one thing to just bear in mind. Um, you have the option of completing the qualification quicker, therefore progressing through the levels quicker. Um, and you also have the um, uh, you also are predominantly in through studying through independent study, so it gives you the option to control your intake of the knowledge, which I think is really, really handy to have. On the opposite side, we also have apprenticeships, which we also, shall we say, specialise in at Caplan. And um, so, some key facts and figures on terms of our study option from an apprenticeship perspective: we have that you incur no debt. They are practical and theory both combined. There is structured support and guidance. You are developing skills on the job and there is clear progression opportunities. You can also apply a theory to your work whilst developing in a role, um, finding a work-life balance and also set timeframes on completing the qualification. So they are the main points from an, an apprenticeship perspective in terms of studying. Um, one thing I would say the differentiations between them both would be um, by the first statement here, which is you incur no debt, um, the cost of the qualification is um, covered by somebody else, uh, which I think is really, really handy to have. But the, uh, on the other side of things is that there is, you are gaining actual work-based experience, working with professionals in this field and becoming a professional as you progress through your qualification, which I think is really, really important. Um, not only that, but you're also able to develop on your skills during the job. So as we mentioned of the technical, organizational and personal skills, if you feel that you are, you cover some areas of these skills, but you would like to develop further on them, you would like to, shall we say, polish your skills a little bit further. And apprenticeship is a really, really good option in terms of you helping you be able to do this. On the opposite side though, you have a set time frame on completing the qualification. So everything is given to you as you progress through your qualification and through your time on an apprenticeship, which I think is really, really important also. And not only that, but as a fun fact, did you know that graduates can also apply for apprenticeships too? They would also be deemed eligible. And there is also excellent graduate opportunities and programmes available in the apprenticeship area. Brilliant. And Anthony, what, what's the difference um, between the practicalities of studying, um, you know, as a fee payer or apprenticeships? Is, is it different than the, the type um, of style in which you're studying? Um, yes, I would say so. Um, with in terms of fee paying, um, and the, you have a large amount of independent study, which is technically combined in apprenticeships as well. But the only differentiation is that rather than having someone in a professional um, from a professional professional uh, role point of view, to, from i.e. in a workplace, if you are wanting to put your theory into practice and you're wanting to um, work on your qualification whilst also in a job and applying your knowledge to the job. Um, with apprenticeships, you have the ability to do that quite freely. Um, in terms of an independent study and a free paying perspective, um, most of it is independent study. So it's all about absorbing the knowledge, being able to pass the exams, um, pass the modules, and then be, and then working your way through the levels and that, from that perspective. Um, what I will say, which is super cool, is in a large amount of accountancy firms don't necessarily require 
um, experience with dealing with accounts. However, it is always preferable. So if you have that ability to have experience with working in an accounts environment, it will also put you in good stead from an employability perspective also. Mm -hmm. um, and I think from with us at Kaplan and our ways in which we uh, teach the qualifications and how it is delivered, um, they are both delivered the same. So one is delivered through uh, we also we deliver the qualification through um, Live Online, which is an online platform, and we also do it via On Demand. The difference between Live Online and On Demand is um, Live Online is actually set up lectures with actual professionals and faculty who work here at Kaplan um, to deliver the qualification as almost as if you were in a classroom-based setting, but from a computer and from the comfort of your own home, which is quite nice. Um, and the other option is On Demand, which is pre-recorded videos covering the sub subject, uh, which gives you the ability to rewind, fast forward, pause the video at any time, to absorb your knowledge in um, and thankfully both are open to um to use it from a fee paying and an apprenticeship perspective and hopefully we also have classroom based tuition which you can return to soon once we have some form of normality to the world hopefully that answers your question yes absolutely thank you anthony brilliant so accountancy in a digital age so with the current, obviously, environment, what we are currently going through at the moment, um, a large amount of work-based practices and uh, companies across the UK have moved to a digital age and more of an online presence, which is fantastic because it, it remains, it helps us remain safe and secure, not only with our jobs, but also with our health. So how does accountancy fit into this? As you know, 2020 was a confusing year and all business across the globe were affected significantly. 2021 in particular brings new horizons and with that changes in accountancy moving into 2021 and in this digital era. So touching on these two points that I want to mention, one is the digital approach. So just to run through the bullet points really quick, moving online with Kaplan and apprenticeships, um, what the differences will be moving online apprenticeships and studies with Kaplan is that you have an access to um, a large amount of support um, when moving online with us at Kaplan. Uh, we have professionals who are um, called our talent coaches, which I think are a fantastic asset to the business. And the talent coaches are there to help you progress your progression through your apprenticeship and through your qualification, um, which I think is brilliant. Uh, but we also have a, a large amount of faculty who are also delivering the qualifications, as you mentioned, the live, as I mentioned before, the live online, the on-demand. So we are adapting super well, um, but the digital approach and age is moving more to that learning-based subject and therefore it, your learning won't be compromised as of what you would have, uh, have expected from your current background to a large amount of our audience dealing with their GCSEs and A-levels and they're not having no clear structure. Um, and we'll touch on that in a moment. Accountancy in a workplace to, and study perspective will be completely different to what you have done before. So like I said, um, like I said before, you know, live online, online lectures, it is going to be different to how you absorb the qualification. But thankfully, um, the large amounts of businesses are using really collaborative software. Um, Microsoft Office is really, is really popular in terms of using Teams, um, Zooms and webinars. Uh, my Google Meets and Google Hangouts. They're just a couple that I just wanted to reference super quick. Um, but it, it enables you to um, increase your connectivity with your colleagues in the workplace. And I think that's really, really important, especially with moving into an accountancy um, role from a new career perspective. It can be a little bit daunting, not knowing a little bit about what to do or where to start or how to go about your day-to-day -day life. But with having this connectivity, it will increase your ability to do so. And I think that is fantastic. Um, working from home as your goal as an aspiring accountant. Um, you'll be supported through your studies through Kaplan and through your employer. And obviously, you know, you have something which is called work and development. And um, work and development can happen through um, whether you be in a workplace setting or whether you be working from home uh, because of this connectivity, like I mentioned. So that's super, uh, that obviously, again, is a really good positive point. And there's a large digital presence, including meetings and conferences, which I've already covered also. Um, moving on, we also have support networks. So increasing communications and support networks and um, support networks increased across the business and developing opportunities. So the one thing I wanted to mention here is the ability to develop and become more involved. Um, and it also links back to these tech changes. So as a large amount of our audience know, um, to so people who have completed their GCSEs this year um, and their A-levels, there's no clear structure to how their qualification or shall we say their GCSEs were delivered. Everything was just so broken and you know with but with me saying broken and uh, what i mean is by there's no clear set of um absorption from a knowledge perspective 
with a career in accounting and how the digital age has impacted it. Um, we have adapted, and the good thing about adaptability is that it minimises the effect and impact on our on learners who are wanting to go forward and learn the qualification, which I think is really, really important. I think knowledge is power, and uh, once you, if you are knowledgeable on a, on a subject and you are competent, it translates into the work that you do whether it be exams, whether it be passing a qualification, and with accountancy progressing into this digital era and age, um, uh, the, the, even though there has been impacts and changes, adaptability is a big thing, and accountancy will also will always be flexible, it will always be able to adapt, and thankfully this is transcended across the, whatever industry you progress in. So yeah, that's everything from me. Fantastic. And um, just uh, touching on that final point, Anthony, you know, you, you've mentioned that um, individuals have imp been impacted by all of these changes and you touched on the word their resilience. And that's really important, isn't it? They would have learned, you know, individuals watching this would have learned resilience themselves, having been through you know, all of this. And that's something that the accountancy sector is really looking for. So we're, we're looking for those individuals who have built up that resilience and have those um, kind of skills that they want to bring to the to the role. Yes, definitely. I completely agree. Uh, resilience. Um, and w like I said, my, my main word here is flexibility also. Um, accountancy, uh, you have to, it, it's adaptable, it is flexible. And with progressing in an industry like this, where things are, can be confusing and there's, there's different twists and turns from a health perspective, from a global economic perspective. And um, these changes are, um, have little to minimum, little to no impact or damage to a business from an accountancy perspective because of how flexible you can be in this position and going forward in a role. Um, um, and being it, and having the ability to um, have this digital presence online and coming into 2021 and for the foreseeable in the future, um, you know, it, it offers a large amount of security in what you're doing as a long-term career also, which I think is really important. Fantastic. Well, that concludes um, the end of our um, our presentation. Thank you very much, Anthony, for, for joining us. Um, and I, we look forward to, um, to hearing from uh, those of you that have joined us. Um, please do get in touch if you have any questions. Um, we've got a wealth of information on our website and we'll also be providing some resources in the description on this um, YouTube um, presentation. Thank you. Thank you.